Okay. Chapter 1. The old man used to fascinate his friends because they said, this guy's been doing cable shows for and uh, shows on Facebook Live for three years, and he always gets these women who are not only attractive but also super intelligent and have great personalities. What is it about this old guy? And then one weekend, the... Uh, his co-host, who he has so much fun uh, doing shows with, couldn't make it, and he had two women who were going to co-host with him. And all of a sudden, one woman said, oh, I thought the show was on Thursday, not Wednesday, 7 to 8 p.m. on Strong Island Radio and Television.com. And then the other woman said, no problem, I'll be there, we'll wing it, we'll have fun. And one hour before showtime, she canceled, and the old man is like someone, uh, someone standing around waiting for a game show to happen with my thumb in my butt. How you doing? I'm Benny Rizzuti. The show is Right to Speak, and we're, we're going to have a lot of fun. As I, I'm solo tonight. I was solo uh, a few weeks ago with my buddy Steve Oaks. He had called in. We had fun tonight. I have Heather Kelly calling in. And this woman is a writer, uh, she's an author, an illustrator, an attorney, uh, an accountant, a mom, and uh, a farmer. And uh, I believe that she plays bass for uh, the rock band Kiss. But uh, no, Heather Kelly, great. She wrote a book that uh, we're going to talk about uh, tonight. It's a children's book called Super Cooper, The Spotted Pup. And let's see if we can get that up on the screen. Uh, Heather's book, Super Cooper, the Spotted Pup. And on, the, on uh, the very top, it says, sound the alarm, save the farm. And so there's going to be more adventures. We're going to talk to uh, Heather. You can come back to me now. Come back to my ugly mug. You'd rather be looking at a dog right now, right? I know. But, uh, yeah, so the show is right to speak. Uh, Brianna is at a reading tonight at the Book and Little Nook in, uh, I believe it's in Bohemia, and uh, she's a guest uh, speaker. I believe she's the lead speaker in uh, most likely speaking from her book, Mosaic, which you can uh, find on Amazon. You can also find Super Cooper the Spotted Pump on Amazon. And uh, the reading, I'm really, uh, I think it's great. Uh, I'm going to see if I can make it after the show and go down there. Because uh, the re reading that Brianna's on is uh, for Long Island Cares. So they're uh, getting food, they're raising food, non-perishable items. So if you know where the book in Little Nook is, or you can look it up on, I'm sure, right on Facebook, you can go bring non-perishable food there. It would be really nice, really cool. Um, there's a few things I want to talk about. When Brianna comes, the show is normally a... Uh, writer's Workshop. It's a live writer's workshop. We talk about writing. We talk about influences, uh, different, uh, how you, your approach with characters. We, we'll talk about next week is, uh, we, we will be back to a live writer's workshop. Today, since I'm by myself, and then Heather's calling, and one of the reasons Heather wants to talk about Super Cooper, the Spotted Pup, is because uh, she likes that our, our goal on Right to Speak is to keep the written word alive, keep print alive. So uh, she's going to explain why Super Cooper the Spotted Pup fits in that criteria. So that'll be really cool. So what I do want to talk about today is uh, I mentioned in the last show, books for holiday gifts. And there's a lot of great books. And now, before I get into the books for holiday gifts, if you have a, you know someone that is a writer, they want to write, there's a good chance they may not have, and a writer should have some reference books. Like people will say you can't learn from a book. No, you can't learn from a book, but sometimes you have to refer to a book as a manual, just as an auto mechanic. An auto mechanic is working on your car. He's, you know, dealing with steel and grease and things, but, uh, he has to refer to a manual. That's why I used to know how to uh, fix and maintain cars up until like the 90s, 
And now I would have to go to a manual if I wanted to even uh, put water in my, uh, in my radiator. That's how complicated cars are nowadays. But if you have a friend who's a writer, you want to get them a cool gift, see if they have ice. This is one of my Bibles. You probably can't see it. We can't do a close-up here. It's a Name Your Baby book, a book with baby names. I use this for characters, so sometimes you don't want to be stuck on trying to think of a name. You know, you want to write because you want to, you want to have as few obstacles with the writing. You just want to go. So if you can't think of a name, name... Uh, baby name book is great. And here's another book. Uh, you don't really need to do a close-up. This is a reference book I have used for uh, for over 30 years. And it's called uh, On Writing Well. And it's written by William Zinser. You could still get this in uh, Barnes & Noble or on Amazon. You could still find this book. And uh, it, they update it. They always update it. But uh, the basic book itself is all about, it's all about actual writing, not just the creative process, but the process of editing, of, uh, of clutter. He'll, the, uh, William Zinser, was, this is a great book on writing well, William Zinser. I'm just trying to, I want to make sure. Uh, an informal guide to writing nonfiction. But trust me, this is an informal guide to writing, all right? It's not just... An, Nonfiction. Because some people, you're writing fiction and you think, oh, I, you, you have to stick with some rules. You do. This is a good reference book for you, trust me. Uh, here's my friend Frank Capo. I'm going to have a picture that we'll put up next week. But Frank Capo, and if you go to uh, frankcapo.com or go on Facebook, this is, she's written many books, but this one, Hopeville, the City of Light, and I love this book. This is a great, I, I buy a few of these every year around this time, and uh, they make great Christmas gifts. It's a very inspirational, really good book. It's a story. It's fiction, but uh, very inspirational fiction. Really, you know, trust me, it's, it's a quick read, too, and everybody should read it. Ray Bradbury. Right here, Ray Bradbury. We could start the auction off. This is a signed hardcover edition of The Illustrated Man. And it was uh, with a new introduction by the author. And this came out in like 1993, 94, so somewhere around there. And uh, I won't open it. It's wrapped in plastic. And I had it signed. I bought it at uh, another great bookstore on Long Island is uh, the book review in Huntington. Okay, or maybe called the Huntington Book Review. But it's in Huntington. The book review, great. They have great books. They'll order. A uh, few other classics. Another Ray, any Ray Bradbury novel that you can get for somebody if they like science fiction or speculative fiction, like Twilight Zone type of fiction, Ray Bradbury. Agatha Christie. I have, uh, and then there are none, which I started reading over the weekend again. And I read it because... Uh, some of you may uh, know that they, uh, they released a, another Agatha Christie murder on the Orient Express. Kenneth Branagh directed it, and uh, my son saw it because, of course, my son sees every movie as soon as it comes out. He's, uh, he's a filmmaker, so that's what he does. He goes to see it, and he loved it. He hasn't seen... The, uh, the one with Albert Finney, which uh, came out in 72, no, 74, 75, the uh, Murder on the Orient Express with Sean Connery's in it, Albert Finney plays Hercule Poirot, and uh, great cast in both movies, the new one, so that's why Agatha Christie, people will love that, it, and get people to read. There's nothing better than a nice, war, you know, a great book to curl up, or you can... You can get, uh, some people like a Kindle. Uh, the uh, Super Cooper, the Spotted Pup, is downloadable. I had to download it, and uh, I don't have a Kindle, so you can get the Kindle app on your laptop. So I did that, and that was very convenient, and it's nice and big for me because that's something. I like something, uh, do that with my hands. It's a little delayed. I'm, okay. 
I'm like Robbie the robot. Anyone know a robot? Warning. Do you know the robot from Lost in Space? Warning. Warning. Benny Rizzuti is stuck without a co-host. What is he going to do? People are going to realize he's actually a moron. So, I'm sorry. That's one of my, one of the voices in my head made me do that. So, all right. I, I was talking about, uh, I, I was talking about, my uh, I, my laptop, and I I downloaded the Kindle app so I could w read Super Cooper the Spotted Pup, and uh, it's really cool on the laptop. I'm not I, I won't get a Kindle. I, my son has one, but my son likes books and certain things he likes in print, and uh, there's some stories like an Agatha Christie novel. I guess some people would say I put it on if they like their Kindle. You you take the train. You can read. Uh, it's a lot easier, I guess, than carrying a book around. And uh, but I enjoyed. Uh, if I get anything down that I can download, which uh, Super Cooper is not, I believe it's not a uh, uh, edition. On it's not in a book form. It's a book form in uh, downloadable. You know. So what, what am I getting at with that? What I'm getting at is that uh, Brianna Gervat's book Mosaic. Also, you can get that in a uh, you can get that in the uh, the book edition, or you can download that in the the Kindle edition. And right now, there's a big sale on that for two ninety nine. So uh, three dollars you can get uh, Brianna's book Mosaic, and for four dollars you can get uh, Super Cooper the Spotted Pup, which I'm going to talk to Heather. I really love the book, and uh, I'll be honest, I haven't finished it yet. I mean, I'm about, uh, I, I have like uh, one more chapter to go, or a chapter and a half to go. So, uh, uh, she's telling me seven pages. Okay. That was Heather, Heather Kelly. She just uh, messaged me. So, I, I guess she's watching the show, and... Uh, I can't, uh, anybody who's watching it live right now, I want to thank you. I, it would be very rude if I looked down to see who is. I just want to say hello to all of you. Thanks for watching. It's going to be fun. Heather Kelly is going to call uh, within the next five minutes. She'll be calling, and we'll talk about her book. We'll talk about writing. Fascinating woman. I spoke with her once, and uh, very fascinating lady. So uh, she... She told me a lot. What what uh, what a life she lives, and she could, and uh, she has. A, there are a few other Cooper books. So uh, Heather, why don't you just call me and we'll talk about it? <laughs> call me. I'm running out of things to say. I'm by myself. I have a video, which I'll show in a while. But uh, as I said, I'm just. Uh, I'm checking out the show. I want to. So far, 14 people are, were watching, and uh, right to speak on uh, Strong Island. The sign is right behind me, and I can't get it right. Strong Island Radio and Television uh, on Facebook. Strong Island Radio and Television .com. Right now, we're also broadcast on radio, so there are a lot of people listening to this show and saying. Uh, why does he say he's holding this up to the camera? I'm listening to it on radio. So I believe that Heather is going to call me any moment now. And we'll talk. Uh, until then, while we're waiting, I'm going to show you a video of... Uh, this is something I wrote, a performance piece when I was doing stand-up, which I still do on occasion. And uh, this is... I wrote this. It's uh, actually a true story about the first time I ever drove home from Brooklyn. I call it my Italian map bit. So we'll go to that. I have a lousy sense of direction. I still really do to this day. Powerful sense of direction. And I still remember I need a GPS. I don't have one yet, I need it. I remember the first time I ever drove to Brooklyn and I wasn't trying to get back. I said to my uncle, how do I get home from here? He said, no problem, baby, I'm gonna make you a map. <laughs> All right, I'm asking an Italian, is everything on the kitchen tank? <laughs> this napkin holder is your car. <laughs> this soda shake is on the other end. This soda shake is the exit to the belt pump. <laughs> don't forget you want to take the belt pump. You don't want to get a boy. Now, my other uncle, 
sitting at the table and trying it, and it's one of those white cloth tablecloths, and they got the butter knives, and they're making marks. Hey, don't forget, you got to turn around, you got to turn left. This is over here. You got to go to the belt barbie. Don't forget the belt barbie. I'm so confused. I got cannolis out. <laughs> I'm so freaking. I start getting this vision of I'm gonna get lost. I'm gonna pull over to a police officer. I'm gonna say, excuse me, sir. I missed the fork. <laughs> Calling for Benny. Hey Heather, how you doing? How are oh, you? Oh, I'm doing really well, thank you. We cut off the video, I think. So uh, if anyone was watching the video, we'll show it again at the end of the show. So this way you catch the very end of that video. So uh, Heather Kelly, uh, th there's so much to say. You're an author, an illustrator, attorney, uh, accountant, mom, and. Uh, yep. And a great and I'm cook. all New England, so when we are New speaking England, you yes. hear your New York accent, my Boston accent is going to come right through. And you grew up on a farm in New England? Actually, I grew up um, with a father that worked for the telephone company and a stay-at-home mom on a two-acre piece of property that was surrounded by forest, Willowdale State Forest. So I was really blessed at having a beautiful place to grow up, but bike riding distance to being able to go to farms and ponds and everything um, that goes with it, including a, a lot of different animals, a lot of different types of environments. And I had a horse from the time I was 12 that I would ride my bike over to a uh, local stable. And even when I was, knee high to a grasshopper i was already volunteering there um informally taking care of the horses there were about 25 horses there wow so i always had dogs rabbits um we had alvin simon and theodore the the gerbils we had fish we had whatever we could have at the at the home and then i had horses in the barn as well very nice cool my, my grandfather had a farm so uh, he had one in Hobart, New York. So we would go there in the summer, and we loved it. So I think that living there had to be great on two, over two acres of land. That's great. So uh, I asked you about that because, uh, as I said, I read uh, – I didn't finish uh, Super Cooper, The Spotted Pup, but I love it. And so I'm reading <laughs> one particular adventure. I'm reading uh, Sound the Alarm, Save the Farm. Yep, and that's the first one that's, that um, I have published. There are more titles to, for the Super Cooper series that have been started than, um, if you look way back, we used to have that thing as then Carter has pills. Right. I guess Carter's used to manufacture aspirin or whatever, but my mother always used to say that. And my mother actually does live on 
a 200 acre farm up in Vermont. So wow. the Cooper story is uh, based on my long haired Chihuahua, who actually does have a heart shaped um, fuzzy spot on his shoulder. So he wears his heart on his sleeve. And he at one point had what, um, um, in, in funny terms, I would, I would call a Mexican standoff with a cow that was in, um, behind a wire fence across the street. And the two of them just sat there and stared at each other across the dirt road for as long a period as, as I can remember. And it was hilarious because they were staring each other down, this little cow and this tiny little chihuahua. So I went home and I started writing Super Cooper, the Spotted Pup. Before that, I had been focusing mostly on my law practice and, um, and just every time I would have an idea for something else to put in one of my pending romance novels, which is my other my other cup of tea under a, a um, assumed name to try to protect kids to keep the stuff separate. Right. I would um, I would be coming back to working on Cooper and whenever I had an opportunity. And about a year later, I had a good working draft. Yeah, uh, I so, read. So a year later, so now you can only get Super Cooper. Uh, as downloadable, we're talking with uh, Heather Kelly, who lives uh, in New England and uh, author of Super Cooper, the Spotted Pup. And this is Sound the Alarm, uh, Save the Farm. Now, uh, you, can, you can only get this, uh, you can only d get this uh, as a Kindle version, correct? Right now. And Kindle, um, when, people, when people refer to Kindle, there's a free app. That's available for yes. anyone who has a computer or a tablet that people can access um, just by going to Amazon.com and, and um, going through their menu. They can get a free reader to be able yes. to read anything. That's I'm glad Kindle. you brought that up because but, that, that's what I did. <laughs> oh, yeah. But the, the other thing that you can do is um, even if you're an author who self-publishes through Amazon.com, um, or it's called KDP is the is the um, self publishing version. Yes, they have an opportunity there if you if you have done your book into a, a format that's been done in, in e format, you can also have them um, market for you the paper version of the book, which I am in the process of having my editor. Um, go through to make some changes to some of the formatting so that it will look appropriate in a print format. I mean, there are so many different methods of delivering literature, especially when it comes to children's literature. The Cooper story is so fun that I had it. I, I used to read it to, to school kids, um, especially when my son was much younger. I had read it to his elementary school class. And we put it in the school library and we put it in two other libraries and the school libraries, all three of them, when I went back to ask how many kids were taking it out, said that the people who took the book out stole it and they never gave it back. Wow. <laughs> so they must have really enjoyed it. Uh, I enjoy it. And as I said, I, I'm honest in saying that I, I didn't finish it, but I intend to finish it tonight. And uh, uh, what I really liked about it too was it's a learning experience for young children because they're learning about it's it's letting you know about uh, without giving too much away, but like uh, learning about uh, about taking care of animals about uh, and the animals. What's great about it is it's a young girl and uh, she lives on the farm with her grandfather. Her father works somewhere and uh, and then. Uh, the dog, her dog Cooper, he uh, he goes outside and he communicates with a calf, and he communicates with a fox. So I don't want to give too much, but they have their own language, and he knows that the humans don't really understand them, but he knows how to make them understand him. And then it's uh, the young girl, and I, I'm bad with names, so I forgot it. 
It's Amelia. That's okay. I'll, her name, if you, what is if her you name wanted again? To, let Amelia. me explain the, the character, the little girl character. The little girl's character in um, the Cooper books, in, I, I, so far she's, she's got some role in, in all of them, um, other than I have one that's kind of a, going back to the beginning as to how Co- Super Cooper ended up um, being an adoptable an adoptable dog, but she's not in that one. But the little girl um, starts out in Sound the Alarm, Save the Farm, as a six-year-old little girl whose name is Amelia Marie. That's right, Amelia and, Marie. Um, Amelia Marie is, um, her father is a is a is an Air Force pilot. He's oh, a, yeah, he's that's an Air, right. He's an, that's right. He's a transport pilot for the military. And that is what I wanted to do when I was growing up. Before they had LASIK surgery, I had um, con- I, it, it was a it was a consistent voyage for me, starting at probably age thirteen, that I was preparing to go to to school in Colorado to the Air Force Academy to become in a transport pilot. So Amelia is named after okay. Amelia Earhart. Oh. And um, then when I looked up Amelia Earhart, there is a current Amelia Earhart who is not related to the actual um, uh, historic figure, but the Amelia Rose Earhart, I think, I think her middle name is Rose, um, offers a scholarship every, every year for young girls who want to fly. Oh, so cool. um, this is so Amelia. The name Amelia has some meaning. Yes. And then Marie. I have two little nieces, and both of them have the middle name Marie. So, um, so I chose Amelia Marie because at one point she was um, named Annie. And I went to talk to a publisher, and when I first went to have this book published, they said, "Absolutely, we'll do it. We love it." And you've got to change the name because Annie had just come out in the theaters when they made the, when they did the remake of the Annie movie. Oh, okay. So it was, it was too common. They needed something that, that would be memorable. So Amelia Marie was created. Much better name. I like, uh, like I said, I, you know, I read it and I, I, I forgot, but it, Amelia Marie, but what I li- like is it's not, uh, you know, if it was Annie, then you'd think of Annie, or if it was, uh, you know, like a ra- like Jane or something. So it it, st- it stands out, and as I said, it's it's not your typical uh, it's not your typical children's book. It's uh, it's a book that I feel adults because I used to read my son books when he was younger too, and uh, I would read them. And this is a book that I would read to children now. You know, this, this is a book is that a, what it, are the, it one of the wonderful me. things about about this type of a book. This book is considered a children's chapter book with a um, a third to fourth grade reading level. But I've found that it doesn't matter what the age of the child is. It's it's like they when you watch the old Bugs Bunnies and what have you, so much goes right over the kids' heads, but the parents get the intonations and the humor. That really wasn't intended for the kids. And Absolutely. in Super Cooper, the Spotted Pup, I've kind of got a little of that in there too. The name of the farm is just past your eyes, dairy farm. It's just pasteurized dairy <laughs> right. farm. <laughs> so kids won't get it, but the adults that read it get a kick out of it. Say, ha ha ha, that's funny. Yeah. So that and the illustrations. In every illustration that I have in this chapter book, or I, I have to re, I have to fix that a little bit um, and fix the book a little bit. We're making a few changes. Almost every illustration has a mouse that's hidden in the illustration. That is so much fun for the parents and the kids because the parents and the kids look at the illustrations and they search for the mouse. Cool. The mouse. His name is Archie. <laughs> so Archie is actually, and I looked up the looked up the pronunciation. His name is Rockfort Cheese Mouse. So Rockfort has two sisters in subsequent books that are Mozzarella Cheese Mouse 
and Gouda cheese mouth. <laughs> so the parents get a kick out of the out of the little intonations that make it fun for them. But the but even though they say that that it's a third to fourth grade reading level, whenever you go to um, someone who's going to be publishing your book and they want to know who to market it to and what have you, they, they use specific criteria to try to figure out where it does said by looking at the um, complexity of the reading, the length of the book and so forth. And, but I've had kids that are, that are actually, you know, five years old, six years old, be able to read this book. I mean, kids are, um, are miraculous little creatures yeah. and you don't know I me mean, kids who are much older than fourth or fourth grade have still really enjoyed this book. So I, I think it's, um, it's important for writers to understand that they do, especially for, for purposes of schooling and, and using a book in schools, if it was ever marketed through Scholastic or what have you, which is my hope for these books. Uh, it, that would the, be that's great. a number that certainly has um, a lot of people that are on one side or the other of it. I mean, when I was in third grade, I was reading at a 12th grade reading level, and I found that most children are reading at a higher level than what the standard is. Yeah, and, um, my son was reading, uh, my son, in uh, he was in third grade, and he read The Time Machine, H.G. Wells. But I had so many books around that I would come home and my son was reading. Uh, once he learned to read, he was picking up the books on my shelf and reading. So when the teacher called and said, uh, do you think Ryan will be able to read The Time Machine? Because it, the teacher was willing to lend him. I, mean, I was like, absolutely. And he did. Huh. He my did. son's name is Ryan as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. Yeah, they're, well, but Ryan, the exactly. little king. It's a great name. Go ahead. I'm going to let you talk. No, I said it, it, uh, I'm done. <laughs> oh, anyway. Okay. So <laughs> okay, well, I want to ask um, you though. Now you let you know a little bit more about the about the formatting of the of the book right. so that we can help writers to to understand what some of the different options are. This book in particular, um, I decided to do first as an online book and have it available for Kindle because it has a lot of illustrations. And with illustrations, if they're online, you can have the illustrations be in color and have it be a lot less expensive. Oh, great. So the illustrations, when you look at them online, if you were to have color illustrations printed in a print format, the illustrations get expensive. So when I had when I had visions of doing this book, it was, it was just to be a hardcover or softcover book, depending on what I could afford to do um, through an agency as, um, as a hard or softcover book that was self-published. And I was going to hire someone to do all the illustrations. I went into one publisher and she said, yes, you can tell people that we're going to do it and what have you. And I, and I had brought in um, some samples of sketches and she's, and I'm like, I need an artist. And she said, who did these? I said, that's not an artist. That's me. And she said, you have to do your own illustrations. And I said, oh my gosh, that's going to take forever. I'm not an artist. I'm, I'm a writer. I'm a mom. I'm an attorney. I am not an artist. And an accountant. But lo and behold, I became one. Um, so the illustrations in the book are fun. Yeah, and they're good. They're they're really good. The illustrations, because when I I was reading the book and I knew you you know it says uh, written and illustrated by Heather Kelly. So uh, yep. when I was I, so I knew you did them and I like you know and as you go on they were they were good. And then I was thinking all along that you always were an illustrator. You always uh, you always did that. But that's good. You were just so you were just giving an idea. You were just sketching ideas, and uh, the publisher that told you that—that that was, I think, that was great advice for you. Now, I was very surprised, but her words to me were, "The people who win Newbery Awards and the people who the people who are really noticed are the people who illustrate their own books. You have the ability. You might have to fine tune it." They don't need to be perfect. This is a this is a this is a children's book, 
But um, at the at the same time, the illustrations did take me over a year to do the illustrations. Wow. Um, it, I I am not um, a, a fast um, sketch artist or whatever. When someone's an artist and they're really good at their craft, they can just sketch something out and it looks awesome. With me, it takes a long time. So some people, it really is. Um, it is better for them to to hire someone to do it. But I had so many ideas to have paid someone to do the illustrations on the book would have made the project the project um, just absolutely so cost inefficient that I couldn't have gotten it into the hands of kids. And, and let me really point that we're showing the cover. To, we're showing the cover right now, and I want to point out that the mouse is in the lower right hand corner. The mouse that you said that you could find. In yep, different... that's Archie. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now, Heather, it's, I want to ask you a question. Uh, you sure. Are, so, right now, you have it as a, it's an ebook now with Amazon. Yes. Now, do is there a contract that you have to uh, agree to with Amazon? Uh, anything about like, do you get to retain the right for your story and your characters? Oh yes, you retain everything, but but under the KDP um, system, they do offer marketing packages and what have you that you can use. And if you go through them, they will um, they will copyright it for you. I had already gotten a copyright on Cooper myself, um, yeah. so so I had a copyright already. And then when you go through Amazon, they will help you with the copyright process as well. Now, would the, you... the thing that's interesting with this process, though, is they will help you, um, depending on if you want to pay someone or, I mean, I, I have my editor help me with a lot of things. And a good editor is a, is a wonderful tool. Oh, yeah. But he, um, my, my, my girlfriend, who is my, who is my editor, Sheila, her name is Sheila McDowell Lang, and she lives um, down here in Massachusetts. I live in New Hampshire. She has done an incredible amount of work to assist me with this book. And um, when it comes to doing a paperback book, Sheila right now is reformatting all of the pictures so that they are full-size page pictures so that it's easier for people to go through and look for the mouse. And when the, when the book comes out in a soft cover version, it will be easier to find the mouse in each photo. And at the same time, they'll be in black and white because in black and white, it's a lot less expensive to publish the book format of it. Right. So I have another girlfriend who um, was going to do voiceover for this book so that we could do it in audio Kids love to have audio and to be able to flip the pages and sit in the back seat of the car or what have you and um, and look at the big pictures and hear the audio. They and, still do. Um, huh? That's apparently, the... having I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was agreeing. I was saying that they still because when I was a kid, I loved that and uh, and I know I had gotten that for my son too. You. You always you can find even in like toy stores you can find versions of books where uh, there is a cassette or a DVD now, and you get to read along, you know. Yep, and, and it's very educational for kids because they're seeing the words and they're learning to read, as opposed and and it's not so quick. I mean, you're you're actually turning pages, looking at the looking at the illustrations, enjoying the enjoying having a book. That's but at the great. same time, you're being read to, and they can follow along, and and it helps them to learn to read, which is which is wonderful. So the so there's audio portions that can be done with these books, as well as the um, as well as having something be a download to Kindle. Download to Kindle can be in so many different formats too. The, um, some some are more complex than than others, where you would actually you know, hit something and a page will turn. And that's very much like a printed book. Um, but in, in other um, cases, it, it just is a continual um, book that it will just keep going from, from page to page. On my book, you, you actually do have to scroll through to, um, to see the, the pictures. And some of the pictures are smaller 
and hence why we're working on reformatting them for the written book. Kindle offers, KDP offers a package deal when people want to purchase um, a children's book or a, or any type of a book that's come out in e-format that you can set one price for um, being able to purchase the e-book and then have an option to also get the um, softer hardcover book at a discount. So a lot of times people want both. Yeah. They'll want to be able to stream it, but they want the book as well. So the kids can be listening to it in the car or what have you, but they still want mom and dad to sit with them, spend some time with them and have them be able to read the book and sit in bed with them and, and, and just enjoy the experience of spending time with their child. And this is the type of book to do it with. This is definitely, uh, I like I said, I really enjoyed it. And I found that it's a learning experience for uh Children who, you know, there are things you're going to learn about. You're going to learn about illness. You're going to learn about the dog. Uh, S -S Cooper learns about snow for the first time. So you find yeah. out about snow through uh, the eyes of a pup. And, yeah. and I really, I enjoyed that, that he, he, he was excited to go out. And then when he went out, he learned that, oh, snow is cold and it's wet. And, uh. And, and there's a fun, the, the fact that uh, the animals communicate with each other, which reminds me a little bit of Charlotte's Web, but the story has not, is not like that at all. This is an actual real story, which uh, you have a, a motion. I, I see that children growing up, this is a good way for them to learn about life and, you know, learn about more than, uh, more than just playing video games and uh, being indoors watching TV. This is, this is a book about uh, a young girl who's, uh, who's learning about life and the animals around her are also learning about life. And it's more, it's, it's about not only kids in their friendships, because the kids are almost like, um, even, though, even though there are full pictures of, of Amelia in there that I, that I have drawn, a lot of this is is Cooper going out on his own, making friends that, uh, that have a lot of diversity um, to add to a group so that they can do more together than they could apart. Yes. When I wrote this one, Sound the Alarm, Save the Farm, um, there, there is a reason that the little dog, the little fox, and the little cow um, are the characters that I that I picked in this one the cow um kind of just kind of picked itself because of this whole thing at my mother's farm right but when i thought about it my long-haired chihuahua is shaped like a fox it has the big fluffy tail like a fox oh okay and you could you could see that a, that a fox and this dog might look at each other and say you know you look an awful lot like me and if they're very young animals very young kids are minds that can be molded and if you want to mold a child into having an open heart and an, and an, and an open view of, of what friendship is and not to put labels on people and what have you, this book and the other books that I write in the Cooper series are all based on kind of a judgment-free zone. It's like they don't, the cow doesn't look at the, at the dog as a dog. It looks at, at it as, something that's very similar to it because it has um even though it's a it's a little female calf and he's a little boy dog they both have spots they both right. have a pink tongue and they both they have both the same do type so of nose so many things that are the same that they have things in common i love i love the uh, interaction of the three animals i really do it's it's uh it's fun it's uh, you make it a lot of fun it's very humorous with them that the, how they they meet each other and, uh, and you know, Cooper is looking at the cow and gives the guy, I don't want to give away, like I said, but he gives the cow a name and then the cow thinks, well, you're very similar. You're s small, but as you mentioned, you know, we both have a pink tongue. We both have uh, spots. And, uh, and then they meet the fox and uh, the fox and Cooper look similar. 
but they're fun. It's, it was really humorous. I, I actually, I really enjoyed it. I really, and I can't wait to finish it when I go home tonight. Maybe I, I think just maybe having, I um, just for, for purposes of, of trying to explain what we're doing here with this, if you don't mind, I'll read just a little yeah, bit sure. from, um, from page four and five of the, of the book about how, you know, a little baby cow, I mean, granted cows don't necessarily have names. Anyhow, if they're dairy cows, they're not pets. And that's part of the reason, part of, of, what makes these animals diverse as well is one of these is a farm animal. One of these is a domestic pet that lives in the house and one of them is a wild animal. So they all have different traits and they all need those different traits in order to have the outcome. But um, at the, at the beginning of the book, Amelia Marie's mom has, has told Amelia, make sure you close the door well, or else the puppy's going to get out. Well, Amelia Marie didn't close the door well and the puppy got out and the puppy decided that he was going on a little walk and uh, he went to the barn. So I'm going to start from there okay. and I will read um, just a little bit so that we can give people an idea as to the innocence that's in here, the fun and, um, and, and the diversity of the, of the animals. And I'll try to read it moderately quickly so that we don't uh, spend too much time on it. But it says, when Cooper got to the barn, he was tired and he was thirsty. And it was a big wooden box filled with water for the cows just inside the gate to the pasture. Cooper was such a small pup that it was not difficult for him to slip beneath the gate. It was much harder, however, for Cooper to get to the water in the tub, which was just the right height for a cow, but quite a challenge for a little dog. Cooper was a very spry and nimble little dog, and he hopped up on the edge of the tub. It was much more slippery than Cooper expected. Cooper felt like his feet had a mind of their own as they slid out from under him, kerplunk. The pup fell right into the deep tub of water. Yipe! Cooper squeaked. The next thing he knew, his feet began to paddle about, and his head bobbed, bobbed onto the surface of the water. And then someone grabbed hold of his collar, lifted him out of the tub, and dumped him into the muddy grass below. As he shook himself off, Cooper looked up at a fuzzy face the size of his whole soggy doggy body. In front of the puppy stood a small, new calf. Thanks, buddy. My name's Cooper. What's your name? Asked the wet little pup. What's a name? Asked the little cow. A name? is what Amelia Marie and her mother call out to me when they want to get my attention. When they need me, they say, Cooper, and I know they want me to listen to what they say. What does your mom say when she wants you to do something? My mom says, Moo, when she wants me to do something. Then your name must be Moo. It's nice to meet you, Moo, said the little dog. I didn't know I had a name. I only know that I'm a cow. I just arrived last week and I've been in the barn with my mom. Where were you before that? Hmm, thought the little calf. I don't know. I don't remember being anywhere before being here. My mom has been here a long time. Is your mother here? No, Amelia Marie's mom takes care of me. Amelia's, Amelia Marie is my girl. I don't mean to be rude, said Moo thoughtfully, but you are a very, very tiny cow, Cooper. I'm not a cow, I'm a puppy, giggled Cooper. The calf wrinkled her nose. You have a black and pink nose like I do. The calf turned her head and looked at her back. You are white with brown spots like I am. The calf winked at the pup. You have big brown eyes like I have too. I really, really, really think that you are a cow. I know that I'm a puppy, said Cooper. Perhaps a puppy is a kind of a cow, said Moo. Cooper thought a moment. Perhaps a puppy is a kind of a cow, said Cooper. Do you lap water with your tongue? Yes, I do, said Moo. Do you like to roll on your back in the sunshine and run around in a meadow? Yes, I do, said the little cow. No, no, sorry. Yes, I do, said Cooper. Well, do you like to drink milk, asked Moo. Somewhere in his mind from his puppyhood, Cooper remembered the sweet taste of warm milk. Oh, yes, I do like milk, said the pup. Yep, that settles it, Moo said confidently. You are most definitely a cow. From inside the barn, a deep voice said, Moo. That's my mom. I got to go now. Moo turned and galloped off to the barn. Cooper sat, kicked his ear with a back foot, 
foot and watched the calf trot into the milking barn. I've had quite a morning, said Cooper to himself thoughtfully. I got locked in. I got locked out. I went on an expedition. I learned to swim. I made a new friend. And most importantly, I learned that I, Super Cooper, the spotted pup, am a cow. <laughs> so that's the beginning of the first chapter. And, that's and then people great. start laughing. And then they want to go on to the next chapter because they think it's cute. And then the kids are giggling and, and what have you. And then the adventure begins. I, it, it's great. It's great because uh, you, you follow Cooper. It's really, you're following Cooper and, uh, and you're learning all these great things that Cooper's learning. And I, re I really enjoyed it. My, uh, my guest who just read that is Heather Kelly. And uh, the book is uh, Super Cooper, the Spotted Pup, uh, Sound the Alarm, Save the Farm. The show is Right to Speak on uh, Strong Island Radio and Television dot com and uh, Strong Island Radio and Television on Facebook Live, which we are everybody watching and uh, listening. Uh, I want to thank you all. I can't uh, I can't thank you enough for watching this show. Heather, there is so much more we we have to talk about and uh we've spoken you we have a little surprise coming up possibly in uh january so you may be coming to the show i would love to second chair your show i am coming to new york and um i am i am hoping that my good friend Stuart hurst is is going to be um Trying to, to trying to get me some tickets to see him perform while I'm down there and um, while I'm there, if I have an opportunity to to come on in and and sit and record with you, I will do so. And you can pick my brain on some of my other projects. Yes. But the the Cooper book by Christmas will hopefully be available not only as it currently is for the Kindle. But my editor is diligently working to have it ready in the print format as well so that people can, can get it. The, the other thing we do is um, I have first draft editions of these books that have the illustrations that I had done before I really improved them. But they have Cooper's little footprints on them. So Coopy actually autographed the, these copies. Oh, so if great. anyone's interested in an interesting Christmas present for their kids, yes. um, they are welcome to look me up on, on Facebook and, um, and ask me about them because I will ship out uh, copies of the original books. And I also have coloring pages um, that, I, that I sell to people. And um, they're fun because the kids get to be read to and color along in the illustrations as they as they're reading the story wow so nice i have those that are available for this christmas and um and hopefully we'll we'll be able to get the paperback version of the book available for christmas as well so how can people uh, order these from you then uh on facebook right or now they all they have to do is send me um send me a message if they send me uh any type of a of a check uh, ahead of time. I just ship them out and, and send them on out. So they would have to, I've, they would have I to must message have you at least a uh, hundred of these, if not more. Um, oh. Cooper was very patient while <laughs> I was putting his, his little paws in the ink pad and <laughs> putting them on this book. So they so would message they, you at, uh, if people, at which page? I know you have two pages. I can put it on both, um, but but if they go to my my regular Heather Kelly page, yes, um, that's probably the best place to uh, to send me a message. And that's Heather and if they C. Wish Kelly. To send me a message, or they can um, email me and just put Cooper um, Cooper book for Christmas in the uh, subject line in my. You can put my. Email up there is heather e s q c p a at yahoo dot com because I started my career as a certified public accountant um, <laughs> before I became an attorney. So it's heather e s q for for attorney c p a uh, for certified public accountant at yahoo dot com. All I right, wear great. Way way too many hats. <laughs> hey, yes, Heather. Thank you so much. We our time is up, and. Uh, I want to thank you again. Thank you so much for uh, calling in. And uh, 
Everybody go to Amazon and you can uh, buy the book. It's very inexpensive and you get the free app, which I did, and you can read it right on your computer or I'm sure people will be, if uh, you're giving a young person a Kindle for Christmas, this is a nice book to put on it as a surprise present. Heather, thank you so much. Heather C. Kelly, thank, thank you. Thank you, Benny. And, and regardless of, uh, of whether we do a full show, perhaps we can at least do a shout-out together when I come down to New York. Yes, I will definitely give a shout-out to you. And uh, we'll be in okay. contact. Thank you. Thank you so much for calling in. Thank you all for watching. The show is Right to Speak on Strong Island Radio and Television.com. And see you next week. Have a big surprise show for you next week. Thank you all. Have a great week. Enjoy. And buy books. Read books. Buy and read books. Keep print alive.